I need a strategy to get on top of household chores. Today, I'm gonna to come up with a plan for staying on top of cleaning tasks. If you like watching videos about homemaking and food, I would love if you would subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, so we can spend more time together. I have a family of eight, so there's me and my husband, Clay, and we have six kids that are ages four through 18. We're home a lot. Since Clay works from home most of the time and I homeschool our youngest three kids, I realize if you're rarely home, your house probably will stay pretty clean and tidy. But the more you're home, the more people in your house, and the more you're actually living in your house, the more it's gonna get dirty and messy. But that's not a bad thing, that's just the reality of it. But it seems to me there's this weird belief right now that we should clean for the sake of cleanliness and that a, a clean house should stay clean and we're doing something wrong if it doesn't. And then we get mad at our kids for taking toys out of the shelf we just organized or we resent our families because they need to eat, which means we need to make a mess in the kitchen that we just cleaned. But you guys, homes are meant to be lived in. They're supposed to show signs of people actually living there. Home might be where you play, where you relax, work, learn. You're eating there, you sleep there. You welcome strangers to become friends in your home. So I'm not saying we should resign ourselves to life being messy and chaotic. If you know me, you know I love order and tidiness, but I know that that's not my ultimate goal for my home. A clean and a tidy home is a means to an end, right? So my goal for our home is for it to be a comfortable place where we can do the things we wanna do and do the things we need to do for the glory of God. So I wanna keep it relatively clean and tidy so we can do that. We'll clean it, it'll get dirty. We'll make a mess, we'll tidy it up again. And decluttering and tidying and cleaning are not the kind of jobs that are ever really done. They need to be done again and again. So we need to build habits for the ongoing work of these tasks. Let me know if you can relate, but I find I go through seasons of being really on top of things and then other seasons where I just feel like everything's on top of me. And right now I'm trying to climb my way out from under a massive pile of stuff. You might already know this, but we moved out of our old house about three months ago and into this house in a new province just over a month ago. So life's been really unpredictable. And before we moved, I had some pretty good habits and routines in place. But with so many changes over the past while, it feels like most of my regular rhythms have disappeared and I find I'm just craving some order. And granted, I usually feel like this in August toward the end of summer, but my need for predictability feels even higher right now as we try to get established here in Edmonton. So today I have two main goals, to make a laundry schedule and a cleaning schedule. My kids do their own laundry. Usually around age six or seven, I've just turned that job over to them for their own clothes. Kids can put clothes in a washing machine. They can add the soap, they can turn it on, they can move the wet clothes to the dryer, they can fold it and put it away when it's done. And I worked on teaching them all of those skills so that when they were capable, I just handed the responsibility for all of it over to them. We generally don't bother sorting our laundry and just wash everything together. Um, the only exceptions to that would be things like sweaters and dress shirts and whites. I tend to just not buy clothes that have fussy washing requirements. So that makes things a lot easier. And then as my kids get older, if they want clothes that need special care, they can take care of that themselves. So I don't need a schedule for washing clothes today. That's not what I'm talking about. That just happens on an as needed basis. But all the other laundry in the house doesn't have a regular way of getting through the wash. And I've been wanting to get our bedding washed on a more consistent basis for a while, but it just hasn't happened. Washing sheets, I don't know if you can relate, but I just find it's one of those things that can just keep sliding without anything really being impacted. Like with clothes, if you've worn all your clothes, you need to wash them in order to have something to wear. But at the end of the day, a dirty bed is still there to climb into, right? Is that just me? I'm guessing not. But I watched a video a few months ago about why you should be washing your sheets once a week. And I couldn't tell you how frequently or infrequently our sheets get washed. 
there is no schedule. We just do it when it seems like it needs to be done. So today I want to figure out how to make washing our bedding a regular occurrence. For towels, I used to always wash towels on Tuesday because Towel Tuesday. It was easy to remember, but there's no day of the week for bedding or linens. Nothing starts with a B or an L. And I could never figure out an easy mnemonic device for remembering to wash our bedding. So it never became a regular thing that I did. I just didn't remember. That changes today. I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna make a list of all of the bedding that needs to be washed um, and other things like towel stuff. And then it just assign days of the week to all of those things. So I'm making a plan for laundry and I'm gonna make a plan for cleaning. I have been putting off all kinds of things until we move. And we're here, we've been here for a month. So it's time to figure out all the cleaning and housekeeping things that I have been putting off. There are a lot of things for my brain to keep track of and too many things for one person to keep clean when there are eight people in this house making it dirty. So of course I do get my family to help around the house, just like they do their own laundry, they do help around the house. But since it's my primary responsibility to care for our home, I'm the one coming up with the plans and the strategies to keep it all under control. In the past, we have assigned our kids certain jobs that they're responsible for so that I don't have to keep reminding them about it. Things like taking out the garbage and the recycling and the compost, sweeping the floor, making sure there's enough toilet paper in the bathrooms. They'd help with tasks, other tasks, when they're asked to, but I have never been a chore chart mom. And if the floor needs vacuuming, I'd ask the kids to do it. And when the dishwasher needs emptying, we just empty it. Cleaning up after supper is a family effort. My kids are all really good about just helping out when they're asked to because they understand we're a family. And so we work together on these things. We work together to get the job done. But I've been thinking about how old they are getting and the reality that one day, and probably soon, they will have their own homes to take care of. And I want them to have eyes to see what needs doing and not just to have an agreeable attitude to help when they're asked to. I want them to take more initiative in doing a task without being asked to. They know how to do these things. There's just a disconnect from seeing it to doing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a list of all the cleaning that needs to be done around the house and how often I think it should get done. And then I'm gonna try to come up with an organized way of making it visible for everyone in the house. I want my kids to see the jobs, pick something to do, rather than asking me what needs doing. All right, here's my list of non-clothing laundry that I wanna do every week. We've got three bedrooms, so I figure I'll do each bedroom on a separate day and then towels on one day and kitchen towels and um, washcloths on another day. So that's five loads. So one for every weekday, that works out well. And in order to remember what happens on each day, I find it really helpful to have an association for each load. Like I mentioned before, Towel Tuesday is something that I've used before. So that was a given. I'm bringing back Towel Tuesday. But then I looked at what was going to be in each of the other loads and tried to figure out a way to connect them to a day of the week. So maybe this seems like a stretch to you, but it works for me. So I've got mine and Clay's laundry on Monday because it's from the master bedroom, which starts with M, so it's Master Monday. Then we got Towel Tuesday. And then one of my son's names starts with W. So all the bedding from his room will get washed on Wednesday. This is where it's a bit of a stretch. Kitchen has the letters T and H in it. So kitchen towels will get washed on Thursday. And then on Friday, since the name of one of the kids in the other bedroom starts with F, I'll wash the bedding from their room on Friday. So I printed out this little simple chart that I'll put up in the laundry room so that I can remember what's getting washed on each day. And then hopefully my kids will help with stripping their beds and getting their stuff in the washing machine on their day of the week. So that's my laundry stuff. And then, for the cleaning tasks, I made a list of all of the tasks I want us to be doing on a regular basis. Vacuuming, bathroom cleaning, 
dusting, bunch of stuff. I decided I wanna have this all on a calendar and then as a task gets completed, it can just get stroked off. And so I made a calendar for August and I made one for September already too, but obviously August isn't a full calendar because we've already passed a few days in August, but I, I put sweeping and vacuuming as daily jobs. And then at the end of each week, I have a box listing the things that I want us to do on a weekly basis. And then I have a box of monthly jobs as well. And I think as long as my kids have an expectation of helping out with chores on a daily basis, which they already have, they are helpful around the house. They can just consult the calendar instead of waiting for a job to come down from me. They can take the initiative to go check the calendar, see what needs to be done today or what hasn't happened yet this week. And if they can do one of those jobs, they can just do that, right? So when they do it and it's done, they can check it off, cross it off. So everyone knows it's been taken care of. I am not aiming for perfection with this. And that's generally why I have shied away from making any kind of chore charts in the past is because I'm a perfectionist. I want all the boxes checked. And when they're not, I think I've failed. But I know that there are jobs that will just get passed over sometimes. I've come to terms with that. And so I made a chore chart, right? <laughs> um, but I just wanted to have a visual to help us all know what needs to get done in order for this house to function well for everyone living here. So we'll give it a go. And if not everything gets checked off, that's better than nothing getting done, right? That's what I'm telling myself anyway. Um, if you have any helpful tips for how you stay organized and keep your house clean, I would love if you would share those in the comments. Thank you for hanging out with me today and I'll see you again soon.